So basically, he, he picks me up in his Ferrari. That in itself, you should go, hmm, <laughs> bit of a red flag. It gets to about seven, eight o'clock, maybe a little bit later. Where do we end up? Strip club. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> what? Took me to a strip club and basically was saying, this is the life you could lead. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the rest is uh, football uh, question time with me, Gary Lineker, Micah Richards and um, Alan Shearer. And before we start answering your questions, um, Micah, can I just say thank you very much? I have here in front of me a positive code. Oh, oh Gary. no, Micah. I can only apologise. Can I just say, Micah, when I said whatever happens with this podcast, we'll share everything equally. I did not mean fucking COVID. <laughs> Having spent two days alongside you, um, and I, yes, I started to feel unwell yesterday. <laughs> so that was the best thing I ever did was turn you two down the invitation to come and sit with you two nuggets. <laughs> Six points of Guinness in a game of football was much better. I have um, had a negative test now. So I'm going to be back out in the gym today. Right, let's let's get cracking on uh, answering your questions. Um, you sent them in by your hundreds. And once again, obviously, we can't answer them all, but we'll, we'll do our best to answer as many as possible. Therefore, I should get cracking. Um, one from Lee first, following on from our uh, last conversation when Alan had um, had a few in the back of his car. He says, uh, following Newcastle's eight different goal scorers against Sheffield United, have you been involved in a high scoring game and not been on the score sheet and got annoyed. That probably should apply to you, this one, Mike. I'll sit this one out, shall I? <laughs> I don't know whether I can uh, I can remember too many, but I always, if we uh, if we had a scored two or three and I hadn't and we won, that yes, I was delighted that we won, but there was always a tinge of disappointment, should we say, that uh, that I had gotten the uh, got on the score sheet, and I still would be uh, if if I was out at night or uh, when I was get when I got in, I was there was I would be still thinking, oh, I would still be angry that I hadn't uh, I hadn't scored definitely, yeah. You? You must be the same, eh? It didn't matter whether <laughs> we won one nil, two nil, three nil, four nil. If I hadn't scored, it wasn't quite the same. Um, I remember one game in particular when we played Yugoslavia away um, with England and I, I, I think I told the story about Terry Butch, you know, when he was shaking the, the wire mesh. Um, we were 4-0 up in 20 minutes and I hadn't scored and I was just so desperate to get in on the act and it it, it didn't happen. So, no, I think I think most um, goal scorers are like that. I think the right words are selfish f***ers, actually. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair enough. Um, this one probably will apply to you, Micah, um, from Jamie Wright. Uh, what was the first or most wild big purchase that you made when you received your first big paycheck as a professional footballer? Expecting something outrageous from Micah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go down a different route. It was a court case, and that was expensive. That was your treat to yourself. What? what... <laughs> What's your biggest purchase? <laughs> as as I got my biggest for uh, my my first check, I had a mm. big purchase, which was a court case. Go on, explain. I had uh, an agent at the time, and for legal reasons, I won't mention names. But I had agent A, and I wasn't particularly happy with their services because you know what it's like. We've all been there when everyone wants you. The, the, they give up this big <laughs> dossier, don't they? They give you everything you want to hear. This is my career in 10 years. This is when he retires. This is how much he's going to earn. Honestly, it gets embarrassing. So I was there for a, a couple of months and realised basically I was just a piece of meat. So I, I'd had enough. I was like, okay, I want to stay at Man City for the rest of my career now. I'll just get one of my family members, which in this case was my dad to represent me. Um... My contract had finished with this agent, but they said the negotiations had started within that time period. So my contract finishes with that agent. I'm now, it's just me and my dad. I go do my deal. 
the big deal that we've talked about many times. We don't need to go into the to the, to the numbers. Um, and then I get a phone call. I'm being sued. So I'm thinking, sued for what? The contract's finished. I'm not exaggerating. Mm. My first paycheck, I didn't get to spend for about six months later, half a million within legal cost, with settlement cost and extra fees over six months. Did you actually win the case? It came to a settlement and I had to pay like 150 grand in, in, in a settlement case so in the first six months of yeah. my career, like I didn't, no, no wonder I went wild for the for the next two or three years. Didn't get to spend a damn penny. That was a nice welcome to football present, that one, wasn't it? Jesus. That's not quite the answer I <laughs> expect. I was expecting a like, massive trip to Vegas. My, uh, my first one was at Southampton, you know, when uh, as soon as I scored my hat-trick, Four days later, I signed a pro contract. And bearing in mind, I had been, as a YTS player, 27 50 a week I was on for a couple of years. And my uh, when I signed the pro contract a few days later, I was suddenly gone from 27 quid a week to £225 a week, and I got £6,000 signing on fee. And I went out straight away and I bought my first car. £3,995. Yeah. What was it? A Ford Escort, red it was. My wrench was B nine nine three X H T. So if it's still out there somewhere, that was my very first car. I thought I was, I thought I was a multi billionaire. It was amazing. What did I say on the play? Belle. <laughs> <laughs> my first paycheck, and this is how things have, have, have changed a little bit. My first paycheck was um, sixteen pounds in an envelope with a separate envelope with a fiver in it. Um, for my mom, um, because um, I was a local lad, all the other boys, most of the um, um, players that had joined the club came from far away. So they're always all in digs. So therefore they got all the food free. So you got an extra fiver if you were local. You'd be careful, by the way, you'll have the tax man after you. <laughs> <laughs> so when I say a fiver, that's a fiver, not five million. Like what were you were talking here though, Gary, please? What, just just for a little bit of context. Don't start, Alan, before you start, I'm going to say the right year. It was, um, that would be, I joined um, Leicester in 1976. Seven mm. long, long ago. But well, it was still good money for then, no? Well, no, well, that was an, that was an apprentice money. I was, I, I don't mind saying that, that how things have changed. I, then I, I signed my first professional contract, and I, I earned a hundred quid a week, and that was, that would be nineteen seventy eight. And then I had that contract for about three years, and then signed a new one when I thought I was really rich when I was. Um, put up to 400 quid a week. And that was what I was earning when I left Leicester at 24. Mm. Based on your own assessment of your abilities, uh, self-aggrandisement or depreciation aside, what sort of players do you think you would each be today? What traits would coaches see and seek to shape you around? Oh, my word. Me? I, I think Alan and myself would be exactly the same <laughs> as we were back in the day. No difference. No difference. <laughs> Hovering around the box, looking to pound. <laughs> Michael, I, I, I think you might be different because you've got, you know, you know, obviously every fullback wants to be a proper player somewhere on the side. <laughs> do, you know, do you know the role that John Stones has got now or Trent? I reckon we could see Micah drifting into the midfield. And using his skill and vision and everything else in that midfield, <laughs> pinging balls around. <laughs> Hell, am I dreaming here or what? I think Mike is enjoying it, though. <laughs> I'm loving it. Tell me more, Alan. I'm loving it. <laughs> Where would you really like to play, Mike? Real realistically. Oops, if I'm you had more ability, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, up front, come on. Everyone wants to play yeah, up yeah, front. No one wants exactly. to be a right back. It's it's rubbish right back. I, I know it's different now. The modern day fullback they're getting a lot of love, and that they can be the most important person on the field in terms of assess, assist, and starting attacks. But come on, everyone wants to be a striker. How many kids do you hear at school saying, "Oh, I want to be a right back"? <laughs> None. <laughs> None. Where are you? Where are you, by the way? Adam? I'm in Spain, Gary. Um, I just, uh, I'm on a little three day golf trip with uh, seven of my pals. You've had a great couple of days, haven't you, Alan? I know, yeah. If, uh, if, 
If Carlsberg did a few days, then this is it, absolutely. <laughs> Got a question from Garrison Allen. Uh, who do you think is the most complete footballer, someone who is good at all aspects of the game? Don't say yourself, Micah. <laughs> De Bruyne. I, I think he's as good as there is around at this moment in terms of ability, technique, goals, yeah, assists. De Bruyne's a good shout. have to be a midfield player, really, wouldn't it? because you do need to have many aspects to your game. I would actually go, um, if we can go all time, um, um, maybe someone like Brian Robson. I, I honestly think if um, Robbo had a stayed um, fit, because he kind of broke down in both World Cups that I played in 86 and 90, I think we'd have had a real good chance of, of, of winning one of those, uh, particularly Italia 90, I think. Because in Italia 90, we actually played a mid... Do you know what the midfield three was? Gascoigne, Waddle, Platt. There is not a defensive <laughs> cell in their body. Do you think he gets the appreciation that he should do, Robbo? Because uh, certainly from our, our area, but I mean, uh, do you know the likes of, of, I mean, Micah, your age and, and younger than you. I mean, he was, he, Robbo was an unbelievable midfielder, wasn't he? He had everything, didn't he? I'd broken into the England squad while I was still at Leicester. Um, so I got to know Brian Robson, who was the then captain of England. And um, we we then played them in, I think it might have been a League Cup tie. It was certainly a midweek night game at Old Trafford. And before the game, our then manager, Gordon Milne, um, he started talking about the tactics and the and defensive corners. And he said, right, um, you so-and-so mark him, you mark him, you mark him. And Gary, I want you to come back, stand on the edge of the box and pick up Brian Robson. So I've gone, you want me to do what? And he went, yeah, I want you to mark Brian. I said, me against Brian Robson. And he said, don't worry, we've had them watched. He stays out on the edge of the box and they've scored one or two goals from it being breaking out. All you've got to do is stand. I said, well, if he sees I'm marking him, that might change. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I'd ever been brought back for a corner. So anyway, the first corner of the game comes. Uh, it's about 10 minutes in and I'm, I'm Robbo's there. And I run back and I stand next to him on the edge of the box and and Brian Robson looks up, he just gives me a look and he goes, what are you doing? I said, well, I I'm marking you and I. <laughs> so he's, and he's just laughed. He's just gone. <laughs> 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 the corner comes in. Well, he doesn't stand on the edge of the box, does he? He charges in. I'm going back with him and he heads it. It hits the bar and bounces over and I'm knocked. I'm like flying line on the six yard box on the floor. 15 minutes later, there's another corner. It comes in. The ball and me both end up in the back of the net <laughs> Brian Robson score. And we're running back to the, I'm going back to the halfway line and he's just laughing in my <laughs> laughing at me. So I I get in half I get in half time and, and I just go, Well, I, I told you. I told, and he's and he's and Gordon's gone, I oh, just just stay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it if you had been good at that you'd have been taking two years off your career because coming back every single time you're defending for a corner or a throwing honestly it was absolutely knackering I hated doing that oh me too I hate going back for corners I mean I mean it's pointless anyway <laughs> um, right what we got um, next question um, from Dan Wooten um, what was the moment you all knew your life was changed and that you were going to make it as a professional football oh I knew exactly the moment I was 16 17 I just made my debut yeah and every agent was after me <laughs> yeah you picked the wrong one though didn't you and it's costing you half a million <laughs> uh, so basically, he, he picks me up in his Ferrari. Oof, I'm thinking, yes. That in itself, you should go, mm, <laughs> bit of a red flag. But he's, he's driving his Ferrari through Chapel Town as well. So, you know, I, I think I'm one of the man, them, you get me? I think I'm one of the guys. So if someone picks you up in a Ferrari, Gazza, now, you feel like the man, so... Can you tell me what the man, them, is? I hear him right <laughs> say it all the time. I've heard you say it occasionally. Tell me what man, them is. So the man, them is just like... The guys, it's like just a couple of your friends. Do you feel as if you're answering to your fucking granddad here or what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm probably old enough to be his granddad. Just about. I feel it this morning. <laughs> so we're in the Ferrari. 
we're having a fantastic time. We go to, um, we do a little bit of shopping. We talk about what's next. <laughs> Who goes shopping with her agent in their Ferrari? They're shopping. It's a convertible and everything. It's fantastic. <laughs> then we go to, uh, what do we do? We go to a, um, a steak restaurant. I think, I think it was Gaucho back in the day. I'm having a, a whale of a time. It gets to about seven, eight o'clock, maybe a little bit later. Where do we end up? Strip. Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> what? Took me to a strip club oh, and basically was saying, this is a life you could lead. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, if you concentrate, you can have all of this, all of what oh, we have done today, Ferrari, shopping, gaucho, <laughs> strip clubs. <laughs> Oh, what the hell am I listening to? Oh that's, what, that's what I knew. That's what I knew. Oh. I had, had made it. That's what I knew. Yeah, it was time. I'd like to make it clear to all young listeners that that's not necessarily the best approach. Micah Richards, where did it all go wrong? <laughs> oh, dear me. I've, on, on, on that, I absolutely need a break. <laughs> Mike is whizzing down the strip club. <laughs> oh, that's... Brilliant, Micah. We took a bit of recovering from, from that story. Um, so I've got a question here from John Campbell. Who is the most famous non-footballer contact on your phone and what was the last message you received? Ant and Dick. You definitely have Ant and Dick. Yeah, Dick um, what have I got? So your last message, I don't know. They weren't in the back of the car, were you, on the way back from Sheffield? Oh, it was an invite. It was an invite to a fundraiser with Ant and Dick. Um... 5th of September, that was. So, yeah, Ant and Deck in mine, yeah. Unfortunately, I couldn't go. They're big hitters, though, aren't they? You'll have some big hitters there, Mark. Apart from footballers, I don't. I have people who message me on Instagram. You guys wouldn't have seen Top Boy, would you? The, the main character, Deshane, in Top Boy. He messaged me recently. He, so, that's, yeah, he's called Ashley Walters, is his real name. But, no, I don't really keep... I don't want to be like that group type, you know? <laughs> I message people in our industry because that's what we know, you know? Let me think. I've got, I've got, I've got quite a few, <laughs> I suppose. Non non yeah, but you're a politician, <laughs> a, a broadcaster, a model. Hey, hang on a minute. Let, hang on, let's go. What the hell was those pictures I saw you, Gary, at the weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. What the f*** is going on there? Tell us. You're walking down the catwalk. When do those pictures go out? Can we? They're can, out. Are they out already? They're out. In the, they were out in the Sunday Times this week. There was a feature. Um, and um, all I'll say is never take yourself too seriously. Um, there was some ridiculous outfit. It was a very, very famous um, photographer, a German guy called Jürgen Teller. And it was like a, it was a high fashion shoot. <laughs> They actually did say to me, this is the sort of stuff that Michael Richards would wear. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, it, was, it was a bit of fun. Were you strutting down the street and stuff like that? I was strutting, I was strutting, <laughs> I was strutting down the street. Oh, like it went to Gallagher. Yes! That, yeah, yes! But, oh, that, that. <laughs> <laughs> For those, who, for those of you that are not watching, that you're listening, Micah has just found one of the um, pictures where I'm bizarrely told me to sit in, uh, sit in the bottom of a tree. <laughs> I, Micah, I got a couple of the pictures off my mates and just saying, sent the pictures through with a headline, what the f***? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I'm going to change the subject. Oh, actually, I'm not, I've, not, I've not answered the question, have I? Um, um, I don't know. I'd probably go, um, well, I've got Ro Ryan Reynolds. Um, he, I was just texting him the other week because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get him on to um, appear on here um, to have a little chat with us at some point about life, at how it's going at Wrexham and stuff. Um, Stanley Tucci is oh, yes. um, his, his good friend. Who's Stanley Tucci? Who's Stanley Tucci? He dresses, he dresses a bit like Gary. <laughs> 
Stanley's one of, one of the world's great actors, and um, he also does a show called um, I think it's Finding Italy, um, looking at food in, in Italy and stuff. It's great, a really good show, um, and he's a, he's a lovely guy, no question about that. Question from Russ Charles: Can each of you name a player who didn't win a Ballon d'Or that you think deserved it over the winner for that year? I'm going to start. Yes, 1986, and me. <laughs> And I have not got over it to this day because genuinely in those days, of course, um, and it, uh, up until uh, fairly recently, the Ballon d'Or was European Football of the Year. It didn't. Otherwise, Diego Maradona would have walked it. Um, so I'm not sure when that changed. But um, so nowadays it's the whole world. Um, but um, and the Ballon d'Or was always a big thing abroad um, r- rather than necessarily here. But I was at Barcelona at the time. I'd you know, I'd sc- top score in the World Cup, scored bags of goals at Everton and then started really well at Barcelona. And I basically was, I I thought I'd definitely win it. Um, and what happened was, because the, the Eastern Europe had never had a winner um, and all the countries got together and voted for a guy called Igor Belenov, who had a reasonable World Cup and scored one absolute, scored one absolute banger. Um, I didn't do anything else particularly that that year. Not that I'm bitter. Let it go, Gary. Let it go. I can't let it go. Oh. I, well, I, I I didn't have it in my hand to let it go. <laughs> <sighs> 1995, it changed, Alan, to the to the whole world. I'm not sure whether it was European footballer or f- I'm not sure Ballon d'Or. Mm. I, I was I was third, I think. I think if I'm right, Who was I it? think if I'm was it Sammer? Yeah, was it is it was it Matthias Sammer, the sense centre half? Yes, that's right. Centre half winning that. Micah, who do you, can you think of anyone that should have won a Ballon d'Or? I'm going to say Thierry Henry. It's a good shout. Yeah, I yeah. think it was 2003, some something like that. Um, I think. Nedved won it and Henri had so many Correct. goals and so mm. many assists and I just thought like what did he have to do to to win that award yeah. which is is disheartening him and it's 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 so bad, like I don't even mention it to him, you know, when I'm working with him on, on CBS. Like it's one of those where you can I have a joke with people, but I never mentioned that because I know, I know it's it also the Invincibles so- as well, wasn't it? Yes, 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 yes. He's probably like me, he's just bitter. <laughs> and um, Thomas, give me your dream midfield three of the Premier League era. Ooh. Ooh, what do you just go, Gerard Lampard and Skulls? And then, do we don't have, we don't have to argue which one's. Which one's better? De Bruyne's in for sure. Depends what kind of balance you want. Whether you want a balanced midfield three, you could put someone like Rodri in or Kante. Or Kante would I? I think he'd be a whole. No, Vieira. Vieira. I mean, this is this is a hell of a difficult thing, isn't it? I'm going Vieira holding. Vieira or Keane could be any of the two. Kevin De Bruyne and Steven Gerrard. That's what I'm going to go for. I would have Kante in there. I would definitely have De Bruyne in there. I mean, oh, you're not even... How can you... I'm Vieira, Keane, Scholes, Gerard, Lampard. Gerard would have to be in there as well. I'm going to go with Angola Kante, uh, drink water, <laughs> and Okazaki ahead of them. <laughs> that COVID's got to his head. Oh, it really has. It's really got to my head. <laughs> I've got one from... Um, Alistair Campbell. Couldn't be that Alistair Campbell, could it? Hang on. Uh, why did you send me a video of Burnley losing a home game to Man United in the year I was born? It is that <laughs> Alistair Campbell. Uh, just as I arrived at the ground on Saturday night. Well, Alistair, if you're listening, um, I sent you that video because I thought it was a spectacular piece of footage and of Turf Moor back in the, I think it was the late 50s, um, of a match played between Burnley and Manchester United. And it was kind of, you know, when they do that now that pictures used to be black and white and they turn into colour. So I was, I, I didn't even know you'd lost um, that game way back when. It was just to show you the images. So um, apologies if it upset you. Um, and you can't blame me for your defeat um, against Manchester United. Um, he's also asking uh, why our second goal at Forest was ruled out. It was another one of those... Um, Handballs, wasn't it? Just inside of his arm. We're not talking about them again, are we? Oh, the handball law. Uh, and the VAR. We, 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 we're bored of that now, aren't we? I mean, 
let's stop giving the air time. Maybe if we stop talking about it, maybe they'll just do better. Maybe they love the limelight, maybe. Or maybe they might change the stupid fucking law anyway. <laughs> I think I think that's going to come, don't you? I think we've got wind of they it. You have to look at the reaction of the professional players, the people in the professional game and the fans. They have to look at the anger um, and realise that that is not correct. And moving forward, it has to change. Agreed. Last question. From Adam Sharp, if you were all currently players in your prime, which team would you all want to play for and why, past or present? Man City. Goals, goals, goals. Past or present. Just yeah. guarantee goals. Look at look at Haaland now. He's a magnificent player. There's no doubt about it. But the chances that he gets, the goals he scores, the chances he misses sometimes, which is fine, you've got to get in there. So I would uh, I would say Man City because you guaranteed goals and success. Good answer. I, I, I probably would say the same as Al, but I'll be different. I'd go with the Arsenal Invincibles. Yeah, but then they might not be invincible. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you give me COVID. <laughs> Touche then. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go I mean I was thinking Man City myself but I'm going to go back a little bit and play for the the Barcelona side of 2010 that kind mm. of era um, Xavi Busquets Iniesta PK Pujol Dani Alves all that lot Messi of course and yours truly up front. Oh, I imagine how many goals you'd score in that mm, team, mate. Brilliant, there. Eh? That was. I think. I think that might. I think that might be the best team, best club side ever. Maybe. Uh, there's. You could probably have put up Milan, um, the great Real Madrid team of Puskas and Di Stefano. That's a good way to conclude it um, with some uh, brilliant football teams that uh, past and present. Um, I'm going to bed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Micah, thank you very much. Uh, Alan, too. Um, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. And goodbye from me. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs>